everyone. So I want to do a real deep dive on the non-competes and the restrictive covenants. So first, let's talk about restrictive covenants in general. Now, we see restrictive covenants in a couple different places. We'll see them a lot in employment agreements, typically for higher level people, but not exclusively. I've seen them be abused by employers, and I'll go a little bit more into that. It can apply to independent contractors. Now, in certain states, it's it's just a written rule that you can't make an independent contractor sign a non-compete because they're independent, right? So by virtue of them being independent, how could they ever agree to only work for you and not work for anybody else? That sounds a lot more like an employment relationship, which there's a whole other distinction between employees and, and independent contractors. I'm pretty sure I've done that video in the past. I'm, I'm happy to do it again. And so in these restrictive covenants, there's a bunch that we see all the time. So one of them is gonna be confidentiality. And there's actually a couple different types of confidentiality. There's confidentiality in everything you learn while you're on the job. And then how about confidentiality in the agreement that we're signing here today? Then there's non-disparagement. Non-disparagement means you're not allowed to go and say bad things about the company behind our back or after the employment. Then there's non-solicitation, which is probably the most important. Non-solicitation is you can't leave and then go try to steal the clients that you work with while you're working at the company. Another one is non-interference, which, which is like the cousin of non-solicitation. Non-interference is you can't quit and then try to convince other people to quit. So maybe like imagine you're gonna quit and start your own law firm. You can't then go and say, hey, who wants to come with me? This place sucks, my place is better. How about a paralegal? How about a marketing director? How about an intern? How about another lawyer? So that would be a violation of a non-interference clause. Um, and not last but least, but certainly probably the most litigated is non-compete. So a non-compete, let's, let's think about it for a second. I'm gonna say that while you're working for me and then for a period of time thereafter, let's say one year, 18 months, two years, five years, I've even seen 10 years, which seems unreasonable, you can't compete. So what's the rationale behind it? That while you're here, I'm gonna train you, I'm gonna teach you everything, I'm gonna give you access to all my intellectual property, I'm gonna, after, I'm gonna teach you how to do everything my way, I'm gonna give you access to my client records, and then you're gonna quit and then go across the street and start a competing business and then immediately start calling my clients or even let's just say that you don't call my clients. You're gonna be right across the street. Like, so my clients are gonna see you and maybe they're gonna go there. And so to protect my business interests and especially the investment I'm gonna make in you training you and giving you access to all this stuff, you're gonna agree that for a certain period of time within a certain uh, geographical radius that you won't do the thing that we do. Um, now, side note, there's a public policy argument that we can't make lawyers sign non-competes, which makes no sense to me that we can somehow make doctors sign non-competes. So we can have every doctor in town not able to compete, but we're not allowed to make every lawyer in town not able to compete. That doesn't make any sense to me. Okay, so here's kind of where the culmination is. The new law is coming into effect on September 4th that all non-competes with two exceptions are gonna be invalid. The first type of non-competes that are still gonna be valid are C-level executives, which means they have a high enough salary and they can control company policy on a real level, not like the manager of the Bed Bath & Beyond, but like the, the chief executive officer of the Bed Bath and & Beyond. Um, and so they, they either C-level executives or non-competes that are tied to ownership. So for example, if I bring on a partner, I can still make that person sign a non-compete because they're gonna be a part owner of my company and maybe if they separate from the company uh, from an equity point of view, then they agree that they're not gonna set up a barbershop across the street. But for the C-level executives, but after September 4th, those will be invalid. There'll be no more of those. And so this is a real tricky situation. Up till now, the courts have not invalidated it. So here's what I'm telling my clients. If you are somebody bound by a non-compete, you need to find out if it's still gonna be in effect or if you're gonna be free on September 4th. If you are an employer, then you need to look at your agreements and see whether you need to either notify your past employees and current employees that they're no longer bound by the non-compete or uh, make plans for what's after. And then either way, you need to tighten up all those other restrictive covenants, the most important of which, as always, is gonna be the non-solicitation. So there's a lot of moving pieces uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment below and I'm happy to answer and hopefully we can um, either help you navigate this and, you know, fingers crossed, depending on where you stand, the courts either will or will not get involved between now and September 4th. So thanks everyone. Uh, hopefully talk to you soon.